What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2022 video. So, what just happened today? We had the North American International Championships, and in case you're not aware, this is the last major tournament, uh, I believe, yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, Japan Championships already happened, it's the 26th of June. Uh, yeah, this is the last major tournament for the rest of the season before we get to the World Championships, which is going to be in August, so, uh, like... A little under uh, two months away uh, but yeah uh, this is pretty interesting wait I'm not being super yeah a little under two months away it's in August <laughs> I don't know why I like doubted my math there uh, but today we're gonna be taking a look at the results from the North American International Championship uh, talk about the type of teams that we see here in the uh, top what do we have here we have the top 64 teams, so uh, we'll like go to top 32 and then sort of skim the rest. But yeah, if you guys enjoy this name point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily VGC content. And also do me a favor, check out my Clips channel uh, and my VOD channel that I just started. Uh, and yeah, it's just extra content from me. Very fun, short form stuff. Uh, you'll be sure to enjoy it. Uh, but also answer my comment question of the day since we are now at the end of the season what archetype this is a big prediction and it's very hard to uh, make a call on it what archetype do you think is going to win the world championships because we have seen quite a few archetypes win uh, regionals we've seen a few archetypes win the international championships but i'll tell you one thing groudon is the most which is weird to say groudon the most inconsistent signature move in the game is the most consistent pokemon uh beyond like zacian in my opinion but yeah let's get into it so uh obviously first of all james evans took first uh, running the Calyrex Shadow, uh, I believe it was Focus Sash, Calyrex Shadow, Assault Vest, Groudon with Shadow Claw, uh, Incineroar, Venusaur, Gastrodon, and Thunderous uh, combination. Actually, like a, the type of, a type of team that we've seen quite a bit. Cali Shadow plus Groudon has been picking up um, for a while, and I think the reasons are pretty... I don't know if they're like obvious, but Kelly Shadow has access to a speed tier that's like untouched by anything but Regieleki. Uh, it's able to throw off Will O Wisps to beat things like opposing Groudon, opposing Zacian. Speed ties with opposing Calyrex Shadow obviously aren't fun, but that's why you run a Focus Sash, because guess what? It's like, you know, whoever wins it twice, <laughs> or whoever positions better, usually. Uh, but yeah. On top of that, uh, being able to toss off Max Phantasms as uncommon as a Calyrex Shadow Dynamax is, uh, is very helpful for the rest of the team uh, as it drops defenses. Uh, Groudon, though, is able to set up Sun for Venusaur. Uh, Gastrodon's able to absorb water moves from opposing Kyogre, which is the most scary thing for this team. And of course, Thunderous does Thunderous things, and it just is an offensive threat. So yeah, very, very cool team that James is running here. Uh, fun fact, James Evans was paired up with my girlfriend round one of Milwaukee Regionals, and he beat her in that match. Uh, and for the rest of the Milwaukee Regionals, she was cheering for him because she was like, hey, that guy made top four. Let's go. I lost to that guy. So uh, she's she's quite happy for you, James. I, I let her know that you won the international championship. So you have, you have a fan now. But yeah, uh, Gabriel in second with the Kyogre Zacian combo that we've seen quite a bit uh, this format. Something that I've noticed is Kyogre Zacian does enjoy running a second steel type in Kartana, uh, even though for the most point or for the most part it's going to be uh, dropping uh, max overgrowths and leaf blades in general. Uh, and the reason for that is uh, Groudon teams are usually at a disadvantage versus Kyogre Zacian if it weren't for the fact that uh, Groudon teams tend to run Gastrodon. And yes, you could technically run a Rillaboom in this slot, and we haven't not seen Rillaboom. Like, Rillaboom's still a thing, uh, but Rillaboom is, like, Landorus food. It's um, very susceptible of just getting, like, KO'd by Max Airstream randomly. While Kartana is, like, susceptible to the same sort of things, uh, it's able to run items like Focus Sash Assault Vest, or I believe in this case it was Life Orb, uh, to just use its uh, decent speed tier and high attack uh, to the maximum degree and just remove uh, water types, uh, especially Gastrodon from opposing teams, opening the hole for uh, Kyogre to just take KOs. So yeah, uh, let me see. Also, notably, this this final match was really cool. It was a 2-0 in James Evans' favor. Uh, in, in the final game, uh, it came down to a Landorus and Groudon 2v1. Or no, it was a Landorus versus Groudon and Sinora 2v1. Uh, and the Landorus was able to make a max rockfall on the 
Incineroar, but the Incineroar survives, goes for a parting shot, uh, and the Groudon, pretty intelligently, uh, is actually going to go for like a, a Max Phantasm onto it off a of Shadow Claw to get rid of the White Herb, allowing for the parting shot to stick around after the White Herb procs, uh, because had that Groudon gone for like a Max Flare or any other move, the parting shot would have just been ignored by the White Herb, so that was actually really smart, uh, and that was actually probably the play that allowed him to pick up the game. So yeah. Uh, a minus one Landris versus a minus one Groudon is a very interesting matchup to see. Uh, usually the Landris has the advantage in that situation, but uh, it, when they're like equal in attack, Groudon can usually pick it up. So yeah. Justin Burns here with Calyrex, Ice, and Palkia. I am the biggest Calyrex Ice fan. It has not won a regional yet. I believe it has not won a regional. It, I think Colossals won a regional before this thing did, and this thing hasn't won internationals, obviously. Uh, but... Yeah, I mean, Tapu Fini is a rather new addition to this archetype, uh, but I do think that this current version of Calyrex plus Palkia is like one of the better ones that we've seen all season. Uh, you know, we've dropped Mimikyu in favor of Porygon 2, which I think is very smart. Porygon 2 does offer more utility. While it does technically make your Zacian matchup a little bit worse, you have the tools to deal with Zacian. Uh, and obviously, you know, Tapu Fini is going to provide that Misty Train to prevent burns and sleep for your Calyrex uh, Ice, which is also very nice. And finally, Joe UX9 taking fourth. Shout out to Joe uh, with the Lunaldon archetype representing that. I have been saying this all season. Literally all season. Lunala does bad at the beginning because no one wants to take the time to invest in it and figure out how good it is. And then at the end, we figure out just how... By, Bye, bye, doggy. Bye, Frisbee. <laughs> uh, that's my dog. Then at the end of the format, when everything gets bulkier and slower, when the, when the format stops being hyper-offense all the way through, Lunala picks up and Lunala carries. It's just, a, it's just a matter of fact. And also Lunala being able to deal with opposing Charizard, set up Trick Room, just be like a, a, like a jack of all trades, uh, sort of like a Swiss army knife of Restricted is, is also very cool. So Lunala in fourth, not surprising. I thought it would take second personally. That was like where I put my money. Uh, but yeah, from then on, uh, we do see uh, heavy representation of uh, Swordfish archetypes, uh, as well as another Calyrex Shadow, phone ring, Calyrex Shadow plus uh, Groudon, uh, and also Calyrex Shadow plus Zacian, uh, an archetype that I've been running for a while. And James Beck, shout out to you. Very cool YouTuber. Um, we see some Celesteela action on one of the Calyrex, or on one of the Zacian plus Kyogre uh, teams. Uh, a bit more, or Wolf Glick also uh, running a Lunala plus uh, Groudon team. Uh, we see some more representation of Swordfish, uh, you know, just standard stuff. Obviously, Swordfish has a lot of, um, a lot of variations, but for the most part, it plays the same. And here in 20th, we actually see, 20 and 21st, we actually see uh, two Calyrex Reshiram cores. Calyrex Reshiram is actually an archetype that picked up uh, rather late in the format. And it basically is just like, hey, uh, on certain forms of this team, we ended up dropping our Mimikyu. So now we can't burn Zacian. So now we just threaten Zacian with the one Pokemon that like will wall it out most of the time, barring like a crit play rough. Uh, but I think it was actually a pretty cool archetype that ran around for a while. It, it dropped in usage uh, towards the end, and I think it's purely because uh, we saw more Lunala, which Lunala does pretty well into this core, you know, max, it doesn't max usually, but a max Rockfall does pretty decent into um, into uh, Reshiram. It also is like super special defensive, and it has tools for beating like everything on the team. So yeah, except for Incineroar, eh, te technically Incineroar. Meteor Beam will KO that thing, but it has tools versus this, which I, which is why I think I didn't, uh, we didn't see much uh, results from it at the end. Uh, we see more Swordfish, this one with the Shedinja. We also, we already know what that does. Um, we do see a uh, Dialga plus Kyogre, uh, which is not something we've seen a lot in this format. Like it, it isn't, in, it isn't non-existent. Obviously, uh, you can go fast, you can go slow. This one's probably like more of a fast mode, considering we're running a Tornadus on it, as well as a Ditto for counter sweeping with like I don't know other plus two Groudon, getting a, a Zacian to plus two if you copy it. But yeah, uh, beyond that, we do finally see a Colossal at 27th uh, with uh, William Mark's team, Monkey VGC. Uh, know that dude, cool dude. Uh, we have Zacian Veltal. Uh, Zacian Veltal, it, it does well, right? But it, it seems that like for the most part, Zacian Veltal teams are almost entirely Colossal at this point in the format. And it sort of makes sense. I mean, like, what is it? Zacian is able to just remove, like, what's it called? Zacian's able to remove, like, opposing Eveltal, and Eveltal is able to remove uh, Calyrex Shadow, and 
it's able to wall out Kyogre. Uh, you have to run like the Rillaboom on there to deal with opposing Kyogre because otherwise your Colossal becomes just, you know, non-existent. It just gets hit once. It's like the one Pokemon that it can't protect and take like a Max Geyser from since Kyogre started running like Life Orb. Uh, so yeah, I mean like this is just standard Colossal. Uh, we see Marcus Statter here uh, running a Gothitelle variant of Zacian Plus Kyogre, which honestly, I think Gothitelle Hyper Offense is something that we haven't seen enough of. We did see some Gothitelle Trick Room stuff uh, towards the end of this format, uh, but I think Gothitelle Fast, Fast Mode Hyper Offense is something that we need, like, I feel like it, it's unexplored, despite the fact that Gothitelle in every other format has been, like, dominant uh, due to the fact it has Shadow Tag, but now it has, like, Fake Out, and it has access to fun moves like Hypnosis and Trick Room. And technically Hill Pulse, even though you usually don't run that. But yeah, uh, being able to lock things in like that, especially versus Ashian, if they lead off poor versus Ashian, and you get to fake out an opposing Incineroar, blocking their fake out because you're faster, and also blocking their parting shot, and then you just double Sacred Sword them to remove it, all of a sudden the game becomes like so much easier because they don't have like that important pivoting tool. Uh, but yeah, beyond that, we see a lot of stuff that we've covered. Uh, I'm just going to point out like the more interesting looking archetypes from this point. Uh, we see a Chandelure comp for Zacian Groudon, which, interesting, um, usually the fire type on Zacian Groudon is Charizard for obvious reasons, uh, but one would imagine if you're running a Chandelure here, it's for Trick Room, so you're going to want to like, it, I, I'm assuming it's for slowing down the game, you're like a slower version of Sun offense. Um, we see a Slowbro, which I believe won a recent huge tournament, was it Japan, or it was some Eastern tournament? Um... But yeah, Giovanni running that. Uh, Slowbro, I don't know what it does. I actually didn't look into it. I'm pretty sure it's just like bulky body press stuff. Does it get iron defense? I don't know. But yeah, that's pretty interesting. We see Rinya Sun. Finally, Rinya Sun. Actually, is there other Rinya Sun in here? I don't think we've seen much Rinya Sun in this format or in this in this tournament. Oh yeah, fifth. We had Rinya Sun in fifth. But yeah, no. Rinya Sun dropping in favor of Lunala crowd on stuff. So that's that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, it's archetypes that we've seen. Uh, Zacian and Dialga is a pretty unexplored archetype, in my opinion. Uh, I don't personally like it because I find it to be very weak versus Groudon, which is a very dominant Pokemon right now. Uh, obviously, that's probably, I'm going to say that's probably like a Water Urshifu, strictly because you don't have a Water type in this team and you want to be able to deal with uh, Ground types like Landris and stuff. Um, we see a Blastoise team. Uh, you know, Blastoise with uh, Eveltal is probably pretty decently paired with Raichu due to the fact it has Lightning Rod and is able to get speed control with like Nuzzle and Fake Out for just, you know, preventing them from having fun the first turn. Uh, but yeah, we do see, oh, one Xerneas. We found it. I was like going to say, I'm pretty sure there was like a Xerneas somewhere in like the top few teams, but here it is. Um, and yeah, it's basically just like, you know, Sun Offense with Xerneas, which makes sense. Sun Offense is basically like, I hate Zacian players. I hope they don't have fun. Uh, I hope they uh, literally game end in a fire. Uh, and like, because that's what you're doing with Wildfire. Uh, and then you just like, throw the Xerneas out and it's like, oh, hey, I get to have fun now. I finally get to have fun in this format. Uh, but yeah, uh, and Gavin Michaels with the Umbreon. But I don't think Umbreon is that special. I think Umbreon's actually pretty cool. And like, it's it's solid. Like, we know what it does. It goes for Yawn. It goes for Snarl, Foul Play, Protect. On this team, one would imagine it has Moonlight due to the fact um, that Sun, for some reason, actually makes Moonlight heal you for three-fourths of your health rather than one half. But that kind of makes sense because the Sun, if you don't know, is just... or Because the Moon is just like, reflecting the Sun's light onto us, which is why we have Moonlight. It's really just the Sun. Uh... Astro uh, astronomy there you go uh and also just the theming lunala moonlight that'd be pretty cool overall i think that this tournament given the high stakes um made it a tournament that people were less willing to experiment a lot on which i'm perfectly cool with because despite that this is like a testament to as to how um how much the formats changed since the beginning and i think that's that's a fun thing that we could do let's actually let's take a look this is this is impromptu usually I would just end the video here with a couple of final thoughts, but let's take a look like the first regional. Let's go, let's let's take a trip to the past. I believe that was Salt Lake City, right? Salt Lake City, where are you? Here it is. Um, it's a team report. Where's the actual results? Liverpool. Here it is, Salt Lake City. I believe that was, oh wait, was Brisbane Was Brisbane the first one? Yeah, I guess Brisbane was the first one. Let's take a look at that. So, 
let's compare. Obviously, Swordfish has been a thing that we have expected from the beginning, uh, and it was pretty decently represented at first. Uh, we did see Ferrothorn at the beginning. Ferrothorn, I remember making a video of that winning the first tournament was actually pretty big news because it sort of set the pace as to how the format was going to go. It was going to get bulkier. Um, we see more representation of Eveltal and also a, a bit more like... I remember seeing like more steel type diversity uh, because we did see more Solgaleo. We did see a few Necrozma Duskmane at Salt Lake City, I believe. And we did end up seeing like Dialga on some archetypes. Togekiss existed. Uh, and yeah, I mean, like the format has evolved quite a bit, in my opinion. At this point, we still hadn't figured out just how important Gastrodon would be uh, to the format. Uh, at first, a lot of people were like kind of naysayers, like, ah, Gastrodon just gets destroyed by Rillaboom, which is definitely going to be important because Kyogre exists. Uh, and yeah, Rillaboom is important to Kyogre, but guess what is more important to Kyogre? Not losing to Gastrodon, which is why Gastrodon still sees usage, because if you get rid of Rillaboom, you're good. And that's, you know, Sun teams do great at removing Rillaboom. I really like that dynamic in this format. I think the Sun and like the Sun and Rain dynamic in this format is just so cool. Uh, yeah, like I said, more Eveltal representation. Uh, Calyrex Palkia team still hadn't adapted to using Tepu Fini as well as Gothitelle. Uh, Lando, I believe at this point, wasn't as heavily used because people weren't concerned with Sun. Rain was just dominant. You can see a, a significant lack of Sun compared to Rain in this arc or in this early uh, format. We see one Sun team, two Sun team, three Sun team, and that's that's like in top sixteen nowadays. You know, Sun, 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 because we figured out how good it was. And for that reason, you know, the fact that there was a significant lack of Sun teams, Lando wasn't picked up quite as much because Lando does phenomenal versus those. Uh, obviously not in the finals in this one, but you know what I mean. Lando does great versus Sun. Uh, overall, very fun format. I'm really excited to see what Worlds holds for us. Uh, and in my opinion, I think it would be appropriate that the World Championships are won by uh, Rinya Sun, just because I think it's still one of the most reliable uh, archetypes in the format. Uh, however, the, the 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 fan of Calyrex inside me says, I really, really want Calyrex Palkia to finally get a win. I so badly want that to be like the world champion team because we haven't seen Calyrex Palkia get a win yet. It's come so close. So many teams. Look at this. Let, let's, you know, let's do this. Check this out. Very next regional, Salt Lake City. There it is. Oh, wait, no. Where is it? It was in here somewhere. Shut up. There. Nope. Where? There it is. Then there's a Feromosa, you know, but you see my point. Anyways, Calyrex Palkia all the way. I really hope it wins Worlds. Uh, overall fun format. Really enjoyed this one. Uh, I'm very excited for Dynamax to go away, though. As far as Dynamax formats go, this one wasn't the worst. The worst was Series 6. Probably followed by, like, Series 5, but, you know. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like in the video, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Also, check out the Clips channel, link in the description or in the comments or whatever, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.